Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us on Bloomberg Quint. On the day that Aditya Birla Capital listed on India's equity markets, I have with me Group Chairman Kumar Mangalam Birla to talk about the company and the group's future plans. Mr. Birla, thank you very much Thanks, uh, for meeting with us today and speaking with us. Does this close or end, at least for the foreseeable future, the group restructuring activity, a result of which was the listing of Aditya Birla Capital? That's right. So as you know, this is part of a composite scheme of arrangement Correct. that we yeah. announced. Uh, which entailed uh, Nuvo merging with Grassim and then the financial services business uh, demerging from Grassim and creating Aditya Birla uh, Capital, which yeah. uh, has listed today. So I think so. I think that this is one large piece of, uh, of a restructuring program, uh, you know, which involved at least two of the largest group companies. Uh, so yes, I think that this is a journey that we have uh, traveled. So have you managed to now, I think, does the group today represent in the way it's structured and owned and uh, unowned in terms of the cross-holdings? Have you reached a place where you see no further I need so. for I mean, any I mean, additional? You know, I, you, you can't talk about too much in the future, but I think for the foreseeable future, I think we've done all that is required uh, to unlock value. Just to give you an example, uh, just on account of this uh, restructuring uh, exercise itself, we've cleared about 60,000 crores of value in less than one year, which I think is substantial. So I'm happy to see that um, value that we've created over years and years uh, is now being unlocked in a very appropriate way. Okay, uh, what are your ambitions for Aditya Birla Capital? Uh, I know at one time the ambition included the ownership and operation of a bank. That doesn't seem to be the case now simply because of the way the regulatory environment functions. But what is your ambition for this business? So I can't put a number to it, Menika, because I think that will be uh, a, bit, a, a bit of, uh, you know, that will be a little, little amorphous to do. But I think that it's fair to say that we uh, aim to keep growing higher than industry in each of the verticals that we are in. Mm -hmm. We aim to grow substantially from where we are today. Uh, we are in significant positions in each of these businesses, whether it's uh, the NBFC space or life insurance or housing finance. But there's also sufficient and more headroom for growth. And uh, that is the area that we look to cover. Uh, we're also looking at, for example, entering into the space of asset reconstruction, right. where we've applied for a license. Mm -hmm. So lots to do. Uh, I think um, you know we've grown at very healthy rates in the last five years. So NBFC, for example, has, has grown at a cumulative uh, growth rate of 44% in the last five years, which is substantial. Uh, the same number for the AMC is about 26%, 30% uh, for the last 18 months for uh, life insurance. So clearly a sector that uh, uh, is growing very fast, a uh, sector that is hugely underpenetrated in terms of when you look at global averages or also the average averages of our uh, uh, Asian peers, mm -hmm. uh, India is hugely underpenetrated when it comes to financial uh, products and services. Right. Okay, you spoke of ARC. There are specific questions I want to ask you about the uh, NBFC and insurance business as well, but uh, what about the ARC business attracts you? What do you hope to do differently from the players that already exist right now and you know the variety of risks that come into this and the humongous amount of capital uh, that it would require? Uh, your thoughts on all of this? So um, what makes it attractive is the fact that you have more supply coming into the market of distressed assets than ever before given what's happening in the macroeconomic environment, uh, given the whole story of NPAs, which uh, we all know about, given the fact that they are being now dealt with uh, in a very specific way. Mm. I think uh, that is one big piece of it. The second part of it is the fact that we have huge operating experience across sectors as a group, uh, which we would uh, hope to bring to bear uh, to this business as and when we do get into it. Uh, and I think that what would give us the edge is precisely that, the fact that we have uh, operating experience which, uh, uh, you know, not many people in the business do. But that's very interesting. So you're suggesting an ARC business that is driven more from a strategic point of view than just driven as a financial investor point of view. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying from a financial investor point of view uh, only, uh, not from a strategic point of view, but the fact that we have operating experience across sectors is experience that we would bring to bear to turn around assets which are in a distressed situation only from the point of view of financial return. 
Okay, and how are you hoping to structure this? Is it? I know you've got a license pending for the ARC business. Uh, you so know, I haven't thought about that yet. Are you looking at some sort a of distressed fund? Are you hoping to bring in any strategic partners? So it could be, it could be both. It could be a strategic fund. It could be, it could be a distressed fund. Uh, we'll be open to looking at uh, a partner who brings in the appropriate, uh, you know, funding maybe in this case. Um, so plans are still uh, at a very nascent stage, but I think it's a space that is very interesting for us. But it's a space that hasn't seen necessarily as much success as it ought to have in the last few years, right? Uh, you know, it was fine when we were still at the 95-5 uh, ARC structure, ever since it became the 85-15 ARC structure. A lot of the companies have struggled, and especially in a couple of cases where ARCs have attempted to turn around assets, that is bring in so operational management there is an appropriate time for a business uh, just in the context of the space that we are in. Okay. And like I said, just in the context of what's happening with bad loans and the way they're being sort of addressed uh, by the RBI, by the banks, I think this is a very good time to get into the business. Any specific sectors business. of bad loans that you no, think not look all. I think interesting that, to you? It could be sector agnostic. It's more about the operating skills and financial strength that we could bring to bear. Okay, and uh, what kind of capital do you hope to be able to commit to this? So I don't know. We, we, this is still at a very nascent stage, Minka. So uh, I'll fill you in as and when we. And all of this know is happening under Aditya Birla Capital. Oh, well, uh, as well. That's right. I all of it will is, happen under ABC. Since it is a financial services play, okay. it could pretty much be housed under ABC. Okay. Uh, well, your NBFC business has had impressive growth rates, as you pointed out. I think there is now a very clear game plan that's already been laid out and been discussed over the last several weeks, as you've met with analysts today at the listing ceremony when you spoke. Uh, you know, I, I think, what do you see as the top challenge in being able to grow that business? Because the opportunity is plentiful, like you said, underserved market in India. Where do you see the big challenge? So I think the big challenge is the whole process of risk management which is something that uh, I'm always very cautious about and very sort of um, focused on. I think the quality of the book is very important, and I feel particularly happy that uh, the quality of the book of our NBFC is, uh, I think, uh, superior to most others in the industry. We've got a net, N net uh, NPA of about 0.2%, yeah. which is almost uh, next to zero. Uh, so I think the big part of it, the big thing to look out for is the quality of the book that you build. How difficult is that level of quality going to be to maintain as we see the economy, uh, you know, in terms of growth rate, quality of improvement only move lower? I mean, yesterday's numbers are difficult to ignore, not just as a standalone, but even as a trend that we've seen over the last several quarters. How concerned are you about the health of the economy? Because your NBFC business, in fact, all of your financial businesses are directly linked to that. So I don't think one quarter's uh, numbers on the economy should uh, change one's fundamental view on the economy. I still remain very bullish uh, on the Indian economy and what the government is doing in terms of the various steps it's taken to stimulate uh, growth and uh, do some repair damage. Um, so I think um, in terms of quality of assets, it's kudos to the team because they have built a very high quality book. Uh, during a phase which has had its own economic challenges in the last five years. So I, I think it's my faith in the team uh, that uh, I'd stress upon in terms of being able to continue that good work, work of building a very high quality book. Uh, if you can't do that, I think uh, the solution then is to grow slower uh, if, if the macroeconomics don't allow you to build a high quality book. So that is something that we're all very aligned on. Okay. Um, you expect you might have to actually have to walk down that path, slower growth, because I don't you think, think that the so. economy is going that, to deteriorate um, further? Slower growth, if at all, would be because we've had such high rate of growth in the past, in the past five years, like I said, 44%, that it would be a little difficult to sustain beyond so the base effect a point. Thing, yeah. But I, I don't think that the economy would take a turn where because of the economy, we'd uh, have to grow. So this gives me a re your reading of the economy as well, that you don't think that this pro deterioration is likely to be a prolonged one. I don't is that think a, so. a fair way to put that? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, you divested or sold about a little over 2% stake in this business, the Aditya Birla Capital business, to Premji Invests, right? Uh, to Azim Premji's um, investment company. Are you looking at bringing in any more uh, investors in any fashion? So what we've said... Uh, uh, and what we stick by is the fact that we are happy to divest up to 5% of a stake in ABCAP. Hmm. Um, 
we're not rushed for funds, so I don't have a time frame uh, for that. And we're looking at a financial investor clearly. Hmm. Um, so that that is the sort of ambit that uh, we'll operate within. Okay, so you're open to looking at remaining three percent that you intend to say sell Absolutely. from here on. Okay, you also made a mention today at the listing ceremony about uh, the consolidation in the insurance business. Uh, actually, we've seen not as much consolidation except if you try and look at the the deal that did not happen, which is you know the HDFC Life and Max Life deal, uh, and more uh, a rush of companies to the IPO markets. Do you envisage your life insurance business actually listing out separately ever? No, what is no your vision for that. the insurance Not business? Not in the foreseeable future. I think that the business has done very well. It's toughed out. It's, in fact, grown at 30% in the last 18 months. Um, and I think the idea as of now is to grow organically. Okay. So you're not in the market to look at Max or... We're not in the market. I know, there were lots of names uh, have been thrown so around. Max Life, PNB Met. No? None of those? None of that. Uh, no, in organic know. expansion in the insurance so business. I think you know you can't say never because never say never. But uh, the basic criteria, the underlying criteria, has to be of value creation. If you have something come up that we believe creates huge value, you know why not? Okay. Uh, there was another question on consolidation that I wanted to ask you, but slightly differently. Uh, right up front, I mentioned that you know. You didn't get a banking license, as as did not many other corporate houses. That's the regulatory framework. It continues to be that. You know, how disappointed and how much did you have to adjust your ambition to that situation? That's question number one. And question number two is, would you envisage any kind of consolidation over the next five to ten years in this particular business on the lines of what we've seen being attempted by IDFC Bank and Sriram? Is that something that interests you at all in the future? So yes, it was disappointing when we didn't get a license because that's something that we hoped for for a very, very, very long time. But I think that's something in the past. Um, you know, that's not an option that um, is open to us, and I don't think that uh, it will be open to us in the future as well. But we've uh, sort of uh, taken the NVFC route, and I think we've done very well, as uh, evidenced by the listing price today. Um, I don't think we're looking at doing uh, something like the transaction that you spoke about. Uh, unless uh, RBI guidelines clearly are changed to say that um, we can get stake. Uh, I uh, anticipated that would be your answer because you don't like being in businesses where you don't have control. And the current guidelines would not allow you to have any control right. if you were to merge You're with right. the bank. So till that doesn't change, you would not be interested in the and, business. And we're not bank. expecting that to change. So for all practical purposes. And if it purposes, were to change, I suppose, if they were to change that, then you probably might want to go down the organic route of a license as opposed to wanting to merge so with the bank, or you I'm might not actually... Sure. I mean, we've got a very successful NBFC now that's, like I said, very high quality, growing very fast. So really, something that we'd have to think about if and when that happens. But you must have I don't expect that to, ha to happen no? at all. Really? You think that the RBI's position or stance on corporate groups I getting into banking will still change. say? It doesn't seem so at all. Okay, so that, that is Rudal. What did you make of this, you know, the Sriram effort to want to merge with IDFC Bank? I know it's it's this you know, recipe that's still cooking, so to speak. Uh, but is that the kind of consolidation you expect to be game-changing in this space? Not aware of the specifics of the transaction income. OK. Uh, I think we broadly covered all the key areas of businesses from within your financial services business, uh, or ABC. Let me ask you a couple of quick last questions on, you know, uh, your outlook for the group. You've pointed out to me that you don't expect this deterioration in the economy to continue. We've, in fact, had good news come in from the metals side of things. Commodity prices have been higher. Across the board, metal companies have been benefiting over the last several months now. Uh, a quick outlook on where you expect this to go, what your view is. So if, if you talk about aluminum, which is what we uh, manufacture, I think it seems like a very uh, positive story going forward. Seems like Chinese capacity is shutting down because of environmental uh, reasons and uh, you know that's what's uh, driving uh, prices up or so it seems and if I go by what uh, analysts in the sector forecast um, that seems to be a trend that will continue so I think it's very positive for the metal sector as of now. And you looking at any acquisitions in the space there was a Bloomberg report that suggested that you were looking at two companies that were on the block Concilium and Alaris uh, is there anything so that no you can tell us about this? Now, having said that you know um, Novellis, Hindalco, we'll always look at opportunities to grow. Uh, but nothing specific that I can t talk of as but of But is this a good point in time to actually look at acquiring aluminum assets? So both Hindalco and Novellis are very well placed in terms of uh, 
you know, in terms of the leverage ratios, cash flow, so on and so forth. But uh, clearly, the mandate for Hindalco is to deliver further. Mm. So there's no question of looking at any kind of acquisition. Novellus, as of now, um, has no plans. Uh, having said that, uh, if there is an interesting opportunity that creates value, I wouldn't rule that out completely. Okay, um, cement. Most of your uh, inorganic work there is done now, or are you I looking think so. to? I mean, we a couple of months uh, ago finished uh, with uh, the acquisition of, of the JP GPs, cement, yes. which has taken our capacity up to beyond uh, 90 million tons. So I think for a while we are we are done with that. I think the focus now has to be, and is already getting a return out of that investment, and sweating those assets, um, getting them up to speed. Uh, these are new markets that we've entered, mm -hmm. which has been the whole purpose of the transaction. Um, so getting the brand out there in the market and taking up the market share, that's the focus just now for the business. The last question I'd have is on retail and a possible return to entertainment. There was some talk that you at the promoter level might look at uh, reviving your interest in the entertainment business. Mr. Villa, is that correct? So we are looking at reviving applause uh, that uh, we had actually sort of... Uh, shut down several years ago, hmm. but the focus this time is going to be on digitization hmm. and digital content. Hmm. Um, so obviously, you know, content providers um, are in a sense uh, the part of the value chain that creates the maximum value. Um, and that's the idea to kind of uh, be in a space which is fast growing, uh, where consumption is going to grow, uh, you know, exponentially. Is this keeping idea in mind or is this keeping us, so you know, sort of being able to idea supply to our... Idea could be a potential customer for this business, but uh, it's not driven by uh, the, the need for idea uh, for content. So what is it driven by? I think it's a very interesting space, uh, huge you value You are personally creation. interested in the content space. I think it's, it's a very good investment opportunity, huge uh, growth. Uh, the time is right. And this is happening at the promoter level, or are you looking to maybe put, as, do it at the group level? As of now, at a promoter level. But uh, depending on how it goes. Yeah, let's see how it goes. All right. Mr. Billa, thank you so much for your time and patience today, and thank you for speaking to us at Bloomberg Quint. Thank you.